Over the years, I brought a lot of different legends to you guys, from the legend of Blue Coffee, who's known for his craziness in community games, to the legend of I Sit, who plays 1v1s at lower elo and said, I quote, attacking is scary. Or maybe the legend of the liar who would lie to his opponent saying he tried to pick the Magyars, misspell the word Magyars, and consistently surprise people with elephants. The point is, there's a lot of legends that I've tried to bring to you guys. And the theme is, these are unique players who play Age of Empires 2 in a way that the majority do not. Now, I was notified about ZZ Top, the player I'm going to show you in this video. But when I first watched these games, I didn't actually have much information on what I was looking for. So unlike some of my other legend videos where I've already seen 10 videos before I bring it to you, you'll actually get to see me experience watching him for the first time. And then also the bonus game that we review afterwards as we get super pumped about the new legend ZZ Top. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome. This is apparently a very unique game uh, with a very unique individual. This is a 1v1 Age of Empires 2 game. And we've got two civilizations with pretty core identities here. In the blue, we've got uh, Mongols for Blame Lag. This is 1500 ELO, so these guys really know what they're doing. Uh, Mongols love their scouting bonus. They can sometimes run forward, steal other people's resources with that. But also the hunt bonus, uh, with, with there being more hunt coming in, normally leads to... Very fast aggression potential. And then in the red, we've got ZZ. And ZZ is playing as Ethiopians. And Ethiopians get plus 100 food and plus 100 gold when they get to the next stage. But the real exciting thing about Ethiopians is they're faster firing archers. So normally, you're seeing a lot of archers from Ethiopians. Uh, they do have other things like this little guy here. Um, the Chotel Warrior and more the Siege is strong too. But for 1v1 Arabia, normally archers, okay? Blue is currently looking for ZZ's base uh, and is trying to maybe steal something here. We'll see if that actually happens. But I want to come into this game with a bit of context uh, as this is a, a bit different. In the event that this individual that I've been told about by my game scouter is a legend, I've not actually seen any of the games prior to this point. So this is the first time I've seen this individual play here in the red. And I've just been told there's a very distinct style. And apparently what we're possibly going to see in this game is something that happens all the time. With, like, down to the number of however many units are made, unit type, etc. So we'll see. Uh, Blue's still looking to steal resources here. And Encounters Red Scout is very close to seeing the Rhino. And, I mean, Red should know, right? You should know that Rhino's going to be stolen. And yeah, okay. So they've encountered each other here. Usually you'll see a player just come out here and take this Rhino before it gets stolen. Good job from Red here just to try and keep this scout at bay. It would be very difficult for Blue to steal this now. And pretty ridiculous for Blue to try it. So Blue's going to try and attack the Vill. And Blue blocking the Villager here. Blue trying to get the kill. And now Red is blocking the Rhino. Keeps the Villager alive. Very impressive stuff there. But the harassment does pay off for blue because red didn't create villagers then. So, okay. So, we're going to focus a lot on red. So, he had some straggler trees for the start into a lumber camp. And I've just been told this guy's got the most compact base ever. Huang would be proud. Uh, if you don't know Huang, you have quite a few videos on Huang. By the way, not really sure where he is. He has not been playing Age of Empires for months now. I sent him an email, didn't hear back from the guy. So, Huang, if you're out there, buddy, hope you're doing well. Uh, kind of worried about the guy. He actually, he had like a YouTube channel as well that sounded like gone, so I don't know. Uh, the channel being gone makes me indicate that maybe he really wanted to separate from the game. And Who knows? Anyways, uh, kind of, you know, <laughs> spun off there to a completely different conversation, but just thinking about compact bases and all-in players and... My game scouter mentioned him. So that's where my mind went. Uh, Blue obviously didn't scout everything that was at his own base here. Uh, is going to find two of these goats now. And is just focusing on pushing in deer. And uh, there is another rhino over here, which Blue has not found thus far. But I would expect more aggression here from Blue. And everything's fairly greedy from both players so far. Uh, with ostriches getting pushed in for more food. 
Remember the rhinos uh, and the elephants have 400 food apiece instead of 340, which is what a boar has. So to push in lots of deer on top of it means you will have more than enough food. And we'll see the berries there as well. Okay, so pretty open maps. Woodlines are pretty tiny here. And I'm expecting maybe even man-at-arms here from Blame Lag. I think in the past, you used to see a lot of Mongol scout rushes. But these days, at least at the highest level, you see man-at-arms from Mongols maybe a little bit more frequently here. But I am very curious on how this plays out. Uh, apparently, for further context, my game scouter played this individual and was so shocked at how unique it was, ended up looking through games, and then ended up passing it along to me. Did Blue know where that thing is now? Okay, oh man, that thing walked right back into his line of sight there. And Blue will bring in the Rhino. Also, I have a viewer in my live stream chat right now saying, Dude, this guy! Okay, so someone else is like, Yeah, we I know this guy. He's got some crazy stuff. Alright, so he's built up a bit of a reputation. Maybe it's time that we make a video about him. Okay, so ZZ's up late. All things considered up very late but let's see what the build order looks like so we've got this is this is where it gets very unique 11 on berries uh which is far more than you typically see doesn't have a ton on wood uh and one of his four villagers on wood is currently blocked which kind of hurts one villager on gold and remember ethiopians get plus 100 gold and plus 100 food when you get to the next stage this to me looks like a fast castle attempt Let's see how it plays out. The red also even still hasn't even left. They're trying to push in the final zebra here. Okay, blue attacking the scout. The scout attacks back for red. Red still wants that zebra. <laughs> Should probably garrison the TC here to shoot blue's scout. And blue runs on by, and the zebra's now too far away. That's not going to happen. Okay. Wow, so Arabia is known as an open map, right? If you're a fast castle player, you're normally not playing Arabia. You're playing something else. And, okay, little gate there because Blue got a little too close to running through that town center. And Blue, by the way, completely forgot to mine gold. So Blue does not have the main arm upgrade. And we have a stable. Huh. Stable blacksmith. This is crazy. So this is a fast castle on Arabia. 1500 ELO. Here come the militia. And normally it's like three villagers on berries. So you could come over here and attack this and kill this. But with 11 villagers, the villagers could actually just fight it back. Especially because there's no man at arm upgrade here. I think Blue would maybe be kicking himself for that. What? This build is actually really good. What's the plan, though? I mean, we have a stable, so I imagine we're going to see knights here. Again, I've been told that this player does the same thing every time, so I'm potentially spoiling his strategy, <laughs> uh, you know, for all future opponents. But as he defends here, kills all the militia and kills the scout, and Blue just says no. He's well on his way to Castle H. Still just one on gold. Where did the zebra go? Did he push in the zebra, too? I guess he's going to try and make knights. So Ethiopian knights are not known for being very strong, right? But it could be strong if with the proper timing. And you notice how Blue played this. Blue is expecting Ethiopians to go archers. So if he's expecting Ethiopians to go archers, because that happens all the time, he would make skirmishers. Did he see anything? He saw the stable, so he's probably thinking, what in the world is that? Berries are finished. The goat's about to be finished. Uh, I guess there's another one there. And Red... <laughs> He's still pushing in the zebra! <laughs> he hasn't found the enemy yet. What? Also, further context. Again, people bringing up information about this guy because they played him and looked at his profile. Apparently, he played... 2,500 games with Franks, and he's played the last 2,000 games with Ethiopians. So uh, maybe he got the fast castle knight strategy from when's Frank playing days. But the plus 100 food and the plus 100 gold you get from arriving to each age has been utilized here. He banked on that because he didn't have that much on gold. 
This is genuinely very impressive here. And I wonder if people respond with, like, any weird messages when they see this uptime. That's a 15-minute castlage on Arabia. And immediately, we have some urgency here from Blue. Blue sells stone, realizing I need gold quickly to click up here. And Blue is walled. Blue invested in some good eco upgrades and whatnot. And now Red makes one knight, and he's got another knight on the way. And he does know where the enemy's located. Okay. So this is really cool so far. You know me, I like creative strategies, right? I like off-the-wall strategies. What's interesting, though, is it doesn't seem like he's really committing to knights for the long term. Because he's gone for the castlage wood and farm upgrade. So he's really investing into the economy. So it's economy first and foremost for him. Making, maybe thinking, sorry, uh, that the knights can do enough damage where the opponent overreacts and is really scared, and then he can boom? Does he just drop town centers now? What? <laughs> what? This, this is really clean. Because his eco is set up so he can produce out of his town centers. He, he needs a couple more farms to be able to produce out of this one consistently, but this is... Yeah, this is good. Again, little compact base... Opponent's probably very confused. Opponent did see the stable, though, so the opponent has Spearman. So the Spearman will actually be enough to defend from the two knights. The scout is just scouting the rest of the map right now. And see if these knights get in. The knights do not have upgrades, but knights are one of the best units you can have without upgrades. A 10 base attack, 100 HP is pretty good. Blue sees this. And blue will be in Castle Age at a very fast time as well. And blue will defend from this. And yeah, the, I mean, the first knight just melts. And now we'll see what blue's thinking. Now, blue had sold stone before. Now buys the stone and figures, I just want to drop a TC. And okay, we have TC number two. Man, I really wonder if blue has played him before. The way blue just decided to... I mean, going for the town centers is a fairly standard move. But it does feel like everything blue has done kind of fit the situation here. Um, we're going to see a barracks now from Red. Okay, so Red wants Pikemen. Ethiopians do get Pikemen upgrade for free. So I think he's worried that he's going to be attacked by knights as well. And apparently... Okay, so there's going to be information supplied to me by Games Guy, which is... We got to decide on the name for him. Is it Games Guy? Scout Guy? I don't even know. People can give me ideas, but... um. Apparently no spoilers now. We don't want any... We're not going to receive any more details on these two. Further context will come later. And normally for me, guys, I find the legend. I sit... I watch the game. I spoil myself ahead of time. I then bring people the information. This is me encountering this guy, this player, uh, kind of live, basically, as I go through the games with you. So it's a little bit different than what I've done for some of my other legend videos. Lot on stone right now. For red. So it looks like we'll see. Okay, well he's going to go for the third town center first. And then eventually a castle as we see the third town center for blue. So, I mean, it's been a boom game. Uh, with the way this game is built up, blue actually has the better economy in some ways anyways. Not maybe with some eco upgrades, but he's just had farms for longer, right? So he probably has way more food collected here. And that he does. The more resources in general... And even faster to the third TC. But Red did get a relic. And Red scouted the map a lot. And is going to get relic number two. And Red's also going to get relic number three. And this is something that Blue hasn't really been able to think about. And Blue also didn't really commit to any like army control over this game, right? So, if this goes late... And I guess we'll see Red know a lot about the Ethiopians if he's played 2,000 games. Um, so he'll probably go into, like, archers and infantry. Maybe some siege, but... Relic's obviously a big deal in the long term. And again, three relics. Red also has a lot of scouting on the map. And sees where most of those relics are. Starts to get a conversion on that skirmisher. And Blame Lag just deletes it. And Blame Lag <laughs> deletes that one as well. He wasn't even being converted. That's kind of funny. 
There's going to be a castle now from red. And heavy on stone now is the Mongol player. Their best unit is the Mangadai. I guess you could also say a drill siege on a troop, but... Mangadai are an insane unit. You definitely want to get to them sooner rather than later, so I can understand that decision. So this is a... A bold, fast castle into three town centers into relics. And might even be five relics. He moved out to those things pretty quickly. And then obviously a defensive castle. And now lots of houses along the side of the map to keep protected. And still not sure what Blue's long term is here. But Blue seems to recognize that he's... Doesn't want to make any infantry here. I would have liked... Or not infantry. Military, excuse me. I personally would always like to see like a step lancer or two. A knight or two. Kind of similar to what Red did earlier. Obviously, the timing was way different. It's always good to have something. But I think when talking to people that are at mid elo, they basically feel as like they can't boom to the same way. To the same level. If they add the units, like I'm saying. And eco becomes really important here. All right. Houses are going up on the sides. Um, it will be five relics for red. And I already want to watch more of his games to see how consistent this stuff is, right? And see how similar it is in every game. University timings here. So that could be for ballistics or a variety of different upgrades. Um, still not sure. Oh, there's relic number five. Okay, relic number five is coming this way. Uh, I would love to see a castle here. Both neutral golds are here. A castle here would be epic. We have Bod Canero now for blue, and blue is making Mangadai. As well as getting Husbandry and maybe even Bloodlines eventually, so... There you have it. Blue also has more Vils. So, blue is more resources collected. Over a thousand resources collected, but the Relic Gold already starting to pay off here for red. I think against Mongols, I would just go for Ar Arbs and Halbs for my unit choice. Uh, down goes the Knight, and Scout could follow as well. The Scout actually gets away. So now Red at this point will know his opponent's making units out of the castle. But yeah, unit comp-wise, while Shotel Warriors are tempting, or even the Siege of Ethiopians is tempting, Mongols are just simply just too strong with their Mangadai against their Siege and Infantry. So, I believe the correct play would probably be... Oh, my God. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I think the correct play would probably be to go for archer ranges. Uh, red is imping right now. The other thing you could do is get enough army to move forward and protect yourself as you build a castle here. So, you could tread this down. Uh, but it might get a little bit... Uh, it, might, it might not be something that works out in the end. And actually, red converts a Mangadai there. I think it might be too risky is what I was going to say. When, again, you just got like a couple monks here. You don't really have much. Outpost on the side. Now, Ethiopian outposts have tons of vision. And we're probably going to see outposts as well. Everything's very methodical for red. But has been outboomed by blue. And I don't want to say outplayed by blue because... The way red has set up the base is very nice defensively with the houses. The five relics, obviously, is very good. Even town patrol? That's really expensive. Again, it's a methodical buildup from red, and I can get excited about it because apparently it's somewhat consistent from game to game, and we're going to have to find that out. But also, um, it's unique, right? It's not just like, oh, Ethiopian archers. Great. No, he's, he's using the bonuses in a different way here. And now there's Siege Workshops. Okay. All right. Again, Town Patrol's already in now. So, man, look at his vision. Yeah, he really has an idea of what Blue is doing. And then Blue's in the dark. In comparison. And Red will be able to see this. We'll be able to see that Blue is bringing villagers to build a castle. We'll be able to see the Mangadai are dangerously close to denying this castle. But Blue doesn't have any clue. It's very rare that there's this big of a difference in vision. But 
I guess it's just going to be Treb opening. Now, this castle positioning for blue feels strong. Will actually make life a little bit awkward, though, because the trebuchets can sit underneath this castle. We have zero blacksmith upgrades for red, which is concerning. And a stable in the south corner. There's something so cool about that. All right. Again, blue moving forward. Blue doesn't know about any of this. Red could see this a mile away. And red getting chemistry and making scorpions? Is he going to go for Torsen Engines Heavy Scorpion? Do not suggest making Siege against uh, Mangadai, by the way. Because Mangadai have a bonus versus Siege. Not the best unit choice. You can't kill the Mangadai if you go for like Heavy Scorpion. And Heavy Scorpion is cheaper now. Not doing anything with this stable as of yet. Does have the Trebs here. And this is where it's so frustrating if you're blue. Uh, this is why a lot of pro players will actually... They'll continue to mass Mangadai, but they're actually going into, uh, like, Hussar at this point from the stables so they could snipe Siege and whatnot. Forward castles with Mongols is a very risky play, and... Monks get a conversion to convert another Mangadai over. Red saves the Mangadai as well. And Blue forced into repairing this one. And we do have Torsen Engines! For Scorpions! What?! Wow, it, Torsen Engine Siege, man, is really strong. And you just don't see it, man. People just don't try it. They don't attempt it. Just like they don't attempt a 15-minute Castle Age. But Red clearly has a way that he enjoys playing the game. And he's doing it on one of the more open maps that you'll find in Age of Empires 2. Now, they're not he it's not Heavy Scorpion yet, but I think he has the resources for it now, right? It used to be 1,100 wood and 1,000 food. I forget the exact price of it now, but I believe he's close. Okay. Stables still being built up down here. But that's going to be something for later. There's Heavy Scorpion now. And more house walling on the sides, just in case Blue wants to push forward. Now, Blue's got this mass. Blue is starting to uh, switch into the cav. But I think the Mangadai are going to get shredded by these. It's, it's one too many scorpions even without Torsen Engines, but with Torsen Engines, say goodbye. I guess scorpions aren't cheap either. Mangadai are still actually <laughs> really good here, but the scorpions are heavy. They're heavy now. There you go. To see if the castle will stay up, though, for red, I could definitely see him being raided to death. Like, cavalry switch right now from blue would be epic. You're very vulnerable against stable units right now with this composition if you're red. Still repairing the castle. I think, yeah, he will lose it. Scorpions and Bomber Cannons working together here. Red actually converts a villager, so now he can repair the cannon, which is kind of funny. And Blue is desperate. Blue is, is panicking. Blue is probably, I mean, maybe faced up against it before. Just doesn't really seem to have a strong idea of what to do against this ball. But the answer should be like Cav. We have more stables for Blue. Has more on food. Still has more villagers than red. But doesn't have the relics, right? So red's gold count is going to be better off in the long run. And so I think at this point, blue... He's, he's selected the right unit choice to try and go at this. And currently, you're pretty vulnerable against that unit choice if you're red. Red's probably going to correct that now by adding in pikes. But this is going to be an interesting aspect. The little raid from the south is something Blue might never notice. <laughs> Opens in Castle Age with Knights. Opens in Imp with Torsen Engine Siege. You're doing additional blast um, damage with your siege weapons here. And it's really good for Scorpions because of the way Scorpions operate. It's good for Cannons and Onagers as well. But all right, looks like a slow creep forward here for Red as he's going to drop a castle on the same hill that Blue had one. We'll see how long he waits here with the light cap raid. Obviously, he needs to make sure he doesn't take losses here. Blue with Mangadai production. Blue with Trebs and Blue's waiting. Blue also has light cap. If he sees the castles going up now, he might choose to engage against this. There are pikemen here, though. No blacksmith upgrades. What? Is that a normal thing for him? I wonder. Zero blacksmith upgrades at 1,500 ELO is wild. 
mean, Blue's just getting upgrade after upgrade after upgrade. He definitely knows about the university and the in-building upgrades, though, right? Like, Siege Engineers, Chemistry's been utilized, Torsen Engines from the castle, Halb now from the barracks. Now, the idea here, if, if you can't kill this, by the way, with your attack, if you're blue, and he doesn't see the helps, so he doesn't actually know how rough this could be, you want to try and use your mobility by raiding the sides. Now, red has, has protected the sides with houses and has lots of vision, so should be able to react if the raids start coming in. Look how much vision he has! This is crazy! He actually actively sees, like, 60, maybe 70% of the map. Massive battle here. Let's see how this goes. You've got the Halbs in front. Again, no Blacksmith upgrades. It, uh, Halbs still do a lot of bonus damage, though. And Blue takes the fight. And Blue will actually take a very good engagement. I think a lot of that due to the fact that the units weren't upgraded for Red. Does lose the castle. But good job from Blue to at least, you know, contest that in a way. I was going to try now to maybe take out the Siege with the Mangadai. But you need to back away here with your Trebs here, my friend. Red still being patient down here in the south. I don't know if he just sent them to do that or if a villager got too close. But that is so random that I think that Blue might not notice it. And Blue says, ouch. GG. And Red says, tough. And Blue says, I think it's first game you win versus me. Okay, well played. All right, that is the most like backhanded compliment ever. It's like, GG. But, you know, I think that's probably the first game you've ever you've ever won versus me. Maybe a little bit of coping from Blue. Maybe Blue realizes how unique this strategy is. And there's a part of him that thinks, man, I shouldn't have lost to that. At, or maybe it wasn't, he, it wasn't any, you know, coping at all. And maybe that was just his way of complimenting Red on the win. But he said, ouch, when the raid came in. I think he realized how stressful that was going to be. And anyways... Painful stuff. Now, I I've just been given some information. It says, so contrary to Blue's claim, they played five times and Blue only won the first game. <laughs> According to AWE2 Insights. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, that is kind of funny. That is a really funny detail. Well, you know what we have to do now? We have to watch another game from this player. And we have to see how he's playing it. Because there were a lot of specific details here um, with his build. Like the 11 on berries, uh, the two knights, the three TCs, the castle, the relics, the house walling. All those things. And, and even Torsen engines. I want to see how he plays this every game. i also curious, does he get blacksmith upgrades? Because he didn't get a single one here, right? You'd think at 1500 ELO he'd know about blacksmith upgrades. But this is clearly a very unique player. He plays the game in a different way than other people do with Ethiopians. And he's still gotten to a really good ELO. Um, so I have another game from him here. Uh, and we're going to hop into that now. All right, so here we are. Uh, I believe this game was played just soon after, or at least like within the last week or so. And I'm going to speed through some aspects of the early game because we know what we're looking for from Red. Uh, so let's think through the details from Red's game that we saw that we remember. I remember extreme greed. So trying to push in every single deer that he could find. Uh, actually, they're... Where are they? Oh, they're over here. Um, he didn't really scout his opponent much. It doesn't look like he's going to chop the straggler trees as long as he did before. He had a very compact base. House walled in towards his gold. And then eventually YOLO'd onto berries. But again, what makes this so exciting is the fact that he does it on Arabia. This is an open map. Like, anyone who likes the Fast Castle could just pick Arena. Now, he does this on the riskiest map possible for Fast Castling, probably. And a map where everyone else is, you know, well prepped to be aggressive against, you know, some such defensive plays. This is probably Scouts for Blue, by the way. We'll see. That's what I think of when I think of Huns. Okay. Yeah, he did get to a second deer patch in the previous game. He scouted a lot with sheep as well, I remember. Wow, he's really scouting. He did locate another ostrich here. All right. 
Looking good. Still pushing in the zebra. Very good efficiency from both players' economies. You probably have to have that at this rank. Weakens the elephant with the TC. Finishes it off. Not bad. Is he going to go for this now? <laughs> Guys, is this... <laughs> this isn't normal. <laughs> is he going to try and get more? I mean, I guess he needs every little bit of food he can get. Blue did just attack him there. Red Scout's still chilling. And yeah, he's just going to try... <laughs> he's going to try and push in more food. This is crazy. Like, normally you're scouting the opponent at this point. And look, 11 on berries. What, we said he play, he's played like 2,000 games, right? So he has his own build order. But it's just so radically different from other people's builds. This is what the game's all about, by the way. This is this is, gets me so excited. Condor is going for a build order we've seen from a million people. And there's no shame in that either. But this is super creative. Red isn't bringing a scout over. He needs to finish this barracks for this plan to work. And blue, maybe we should slow it down a little bit now. Blue is just going to go add eco and add scouts to be aggressive. So the plan has been temporarily delayed for the time being. But again, you had one on gold, which is what happened before. Okay, now barracks will complete. And he realizes he needs the wood for a stable then. Okay, so he's going to go barracks, blacksmith, and then needs the wood for a stable. Now, last time what happens is the enemy didn't have... They, they committed to a fight that they would normally be able to win on berries, but there were 11 villagers there. I guess we do have a spear edition here, so there's a bit of adapting required against the scout rush. But, I mean, the spearman's in position, and it gets two really nice hits there. So that's not bad. Still, though, waiting for the stable. Meanwhile, blue... Is adding an archery range. So, you know, the common thing to do on the back of a scout rush is if they go spearmen, you add, like, skirmishers. Or, or archers. It feels like the strategy is is good enough. I, again, we haven't even seen if it works in this game. But I feel like this strategy works because players at this elo don't always have the execution right or the timing right on their attacks, right? We saw that in the previous game. And now Blue's like, I don't know where to go. Look how compact his base is. And Blue's going to come back over here and there's nothing to attack. Look at this. This is crazy. He's still got sheep left because he saved it all. Oh, please push in another deer. <laughs> please. Please do it. <laughs> I love you so much already, ZZ. Or ZZT. <laughs> oh, no way. Well, the strategy is greed, T90. <laughs> I love this guy. Okay, so he's got two spearmen. He's still defending. He's not going for the enemy's base at all. The enemy has played probably, you know, 1,000 plus games with Scout Rush. So he's going for skirms. He's at... He's adding walls. He's adding farms. Normal meta things. And he's now looking for damage. But the way the base is built up is it's really hard to find damage. And we know he's going to add knights, right? So, you know, two knights is actually pretty decent against scouts and skirms. Man, this is cool. You think his name is supposed to be ZZ Top? Z ZZ Top. Yeah, I could see that, actually. I didn't actually think about that until this moment when I looked at his name. Anyways, Ostrich is coming in, by the way. Still hasn't found the enemy. Enemy doesn't want to run into the TC here. And remember, last time he made two knights, and then he went for the TC. So again, I just want to see how consistent this is with what we saw in the previous game. Right now, Blue's thinking, I've got him off of gold. This is perfect. And we've got two knights in queue. Now he went double bit axe and he went bow saw in the previous game. And he had eight farms before he ended up dropping the second TC. I swear, if it's actually eight, I will be wowed. 
Okay. Adding the knights. He's he's placed eight farms. He's not going above it. I remember it was eight before. Lou sees this and is probably very confused. And there goes the TC. Now, does anyone remember? Wasn't his second TC on a woodline and a stone? His second TC was on a woodline and a stone in the first game. It was. Because remember, he mined stone a lot. Oh, God. Okay, so let's think of the order. So again, knight here, really strong against the skirms. He is making a third knight. So that is different than the previous game. But I think we can give him that. So the, the additional TC is always on stone. He's got a micro as units now. Blue has started to add uh, some spearmen, which is what the blue player had done in the previous game as well. Blue also is completely walled, and he's using the market just like the previous player. He's like, okay, I need Castle Age because this guy was up pretty fast. It was in this game um, 1537, so it was a bit delayed than what we saw previously. Okay, so he he might not be the order that other people do for their builds, but there th this is a ZZ Top build order here. This is his thing. And again, what I said before, by the way, five kills, zero deaths. Um, what I said before is that he could do way more damage than he did in the previous game with these knights. Ah! Oh man, th this is this is awful for Blue. Just disastrous, because now you're taking losses. And your opponent's booming. And you've got to bring army home. It's just a painful situation. And it's so easy for it to all fall apart. Because Red seems to really have his timings down. So I wonder... The next TC will be here, right? Because he wants to be on a woodline and a gold. It was on a woodline and an extra gold. In general, placing the TCs where he does, by the way, is really smart. His positions are always, are always solid. This is the downside of Huns, too. It's like, you can't house wall. So it's so hard to plug your map. And Red just killing villager after villager after villager here. Living the dream. There's the TC. And it, you know, is, is just a position that is much stronger than the previous game. Because in the previous game, he hadn't killed anything with the attack. And, but he's still sticking to his plan at home. So next, we're probably going to see Monastery. Uh, and we could see... We'll see if he makes more knights for this. I'm actually very curious on that. And we'll probably see a castle at some point too. Guys, he's actually saving the weak knight. Everything about this player, I love so much. This is so cool. Like, talk about being creative. And I think a lot of people, it would be a dream to make it to 1500 elo. That is a really hard elo to get it to, uh, to get to. This is a very creative player who's come up with his own way of playing that kind of breaks the meta, surprises people. And anyways, there's the castle and there's the monastery. Okay, so other things. Uh, house walls to the edge of the map. And we'll see what he does to deal with this. This is not something he had to contest with in the previous game. Um, but yeah, a lot of house walling at some point on the flank. Um, outposts, right? And then, still very curious on if he ever gets blacksmith upgrades. Wait, he had a blacksmith, right? He builds that with the stable, correct? What did he build? Oh, it's right there. I'm oh, sorry, I'm blind. Okay, so back to back to normal time. So he does build it. Getting wheelbarrow now. Finishes the monastery. It doesn't actually have a lot on gold right now. And blue... Has blue clicked up the castle yet? Or is blue in castle? I'm confused. Blue's in castle. Okay, blue's gonna go knights. Adding two stables now on top of the starting stable. So my guess is blue feels like he's way behind and needs to kill. Which is understandable. And is accurate to the situation here as well. And it's still only two pikes and two knights somewhere for red. I guess they're healing inside the castle. So yeah, damage could be done here. And this is going to force Red to make something else. Um, the monks are going to be on the way. What's the scouting look like? Okay, can see some of the relics. In the previous game, there was a bit more scouting there. That said, the scout's still alive. <laughs> the scout is still alive. It probably will scout things. 
Blue must be confused. From Blue's perspective, Blue could... Blue could see the guy's not on gold. So must think that this is a really good position to be in. And we see TC number four. Now that is a bit different than the previous game. But you need another gold because you can't take this one. And this is an exposed area. There's a monk to get relic number one. We also have an outpost from red. And we will probably see some more outposts as well. But this is this game is probably not going to go on as long as the previous one. Because of Blue's approach here. Blue is just... Like, I'm behind. I need to make a lot of knights and kill a lot of villagers right now. So, I think... If Red were to want to win this game now, it's just pure pikeman defense. And that should do it. But man, this is so cool. Okay, apparently the 4th TC is common. And what we had seen in the previous game is, is more of an oddity. That's good to know. I wonder how much attention he pays to his monks, too. Does he just... He probably just sets a waypoint on them. Blue might just pass here. I don't think Blue noticed. Blue's just sending his knight to the group. So, just passing. And Blue's not thinking about relics. Blue's just thinking of getting a big knight mess. But the two to three knights does so much. And the thing is, you don't even need to kill Vils. And you should be in a good spot economically because you're adding the town centers first, right? So the strat's really good. You don't need to get kills to get a villager lead, but if you do get kills, it obviously snowballs it. And the scout and the knights here, they go in and snipe the skirmishers. And the monks still looking around for relics for red, but are probably going to come over here and heal up the same knights. And if, there's obviously going to be some pikemen as well. For ZZ Top. And someone says Arabia is too open for me. My favorite maps are Nomad, Mega Random, and Golden Pit in that order. Well, it's not too open for ZZ. This guy's able to make it happen. With minimal walling, he doesn't really wall that much. It's just he's able to box the opponent out of certain resources so nicely. And then he just booms. I mean, he attacks with knights and then he booms and he gets relics. But I mean, this guy is not playing Arabia in a normal way here. <laughs> You'll ruin this guy, T90? Expose him to everyone? <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's where I'm going to get a little bit conflicted. But certain things are just too good and have to be shared with the rest of the world, right? And also, he's played over 2,000 games. And there are instances where he has rematched people many, many times. I think my game submission guy told me he actually lost to this player. Which made him think, wow, that's unique. Let me look at his games. And then we ended up getting here. 87 eco versus just 20 or 50. But oh my god. Blue, at what point are you going to attack, dude? At what point are you just going to attack? Yeah, also I think the strategy is good enough where even if you know what's happening... I don't know if you can really adapt a way to deal with it if you're at the same rank as this guy, right? Because the answer to how you beat this is you have to do damage and feudal, right? And we have seen men at arm and scouts against it, which is good. Here are the houses! There are the houses! Oh my goodness, dude. Holy house wall, bro. Anyways, yeah, um, we have seen people go for those types of strategies. It's just the execution... It's just not quite there that he's able to get away with it. And even if you kill two Vils, he's still going to get two Knights. And he's going to be in Castle Age way faster than you. It's really complicated. As a lot of Knights. And in response, we're going to see Masonry from Red. He still doesn't have Blacksmith upgrades, guys. Barenthus, is this standard where he doesn't get blacksmith upgrades, or did you not look for that? That is, like, that is a big thing in my opinion. Because blacksmith upgrades are a really important tool. Not really a tool, right? It's just very important. And, like, everyone at 1500 ELO gets blacksmith upgrades, right? Like, does he not know? He doesn't get them. Wow, that's crazy. I want, he must have come from a different game, right? Age of Empires flows a little bit differently than other games. I, uh, 
you know, I'm not the guy who has a lot of experience in other games, so it's really tricky for me to make comparisons. But, anyways, I mean, he knows pikemen are good unit up against knights here. Blue's like, I gotta force the issue. Uh, and is gonna run into pikes and castle fire. I mean, can win the fight. Because that's a lot of knights. And the knights will have full upgrades in a second, but is donating some knights to the monks to get conversions. Red's gonna be making more pikemen. The Tal Bell has been wrong? So eco everywhere goes idle. Oh my god, his whole eco went idle. This is like a mid-elo, low-elo legend here. You guys know how I feel about the town belt. That, oh my, I can't. It brings me so much pain to see such a good economy go idle like that. But, blue GG's. <laughs> blue GG's. <laughs> and blue taps out. And blue's probably like, I haven't rang the town bell since I was 700 elo. <laughs> Just lost to the town bell. Dang. <laughs> This guy's awesome. What a sick player. And by the way, this is completely over, right? It, it, Town Bell's still not optimal, right? Like all this eco could be working. You could just get garrison uh, the units that need to be. Uh, I made a video on that. It's called TC Tips. You could check it out. There's a lot of other things too. But it's completely over. He's a massive boom. He will be an imp soon, right? That was Blue's whole army. Blue waited a long time to attack. Um, you could argue he waited too long. But Blue might have felt like I need as many knights as possible. We can go back and forth on that. But this strategy is ridiculous. 15-minute castle time in the first game. Not easy. 15-30 um, castle in this game because there's a bit more aggression you had to deal with. Insane greed with pushing the deer. Lots of quirkiness and lots of like specific things that he does with his eco every game. Now, I've only seen two, right? Um, and, and these were the two. But I am immediately interested in seeing more games from this guy, and I'm curious on what people will have to say on YouTube. Um, ZZ Top, if that is what you'd like me to call you, you, my friend, are a creative individual. Well played. And the thing is, if he finds out about this video and he watches, he's going to be like, blacksmith upgrades? Didn't think of that. Like th Then suddenly his pikes and his, you know... Uh, yeah, I guess mainly his pikes, because, well, maybe his knights, um, they're going to have more upgrades. And it looks like he maybe had queued up a few Shoto warriors here, too. So, dang. Um, again, the, the fact that Ethiopians are seen as an archer sieve, and that he's at 1,500 elo, and he doesn't build towards archers. The fact that things are built up so nicely towards the same game plan almost every single time, and the fact that he's hanging around this rank is, is really freaking cool. Um, this is what I like to do. Uh, this is, these are the types of games I like to look for. These are the types of players I like to highlight. I, of course, hope that I don't ruin it for the guy. But again, I think the fact that he's up so quickly every single game tells me it's going to be pretty difficult to stop him. And the first player that we watched lose to him said, I think this is the first time I've lost to you. He clearly, like, you remember the first game, right? He tried to steal a boar. He was fairly aggressive. Uh, you know, I actually think looking back now, he tried to do everything he could to delay the guy because he knew what his strategy was going to be. And apparently, even though he said it was the only time he lost him, he lost him other times. So that's interesting. Um, well played. Curious on people's thoughts, obviously. Very fun games. And I'm sure there'll be more from this guy in the future we can look for. So that, ladies and gents, is kind of the introduction to ZZ Top, the player who plays Ethiopians in a way that most players don't, as the majority are simply going archers, and has a very strict order of how he likes to do things in the game. It is so hard to be unique now at that type of level, right? 1500 ELO is very difficult to get to. The majority of the players in our player base aren't there, and yet without blacksmith upgrades, and playing in many ways against the some of the early bonuses that the Ethiopians have, ZZ makes it happen. Now, there is a part of me that feels a little bad because any 1500 ELO player that runs into him now uh, will kind of have an idea of what's happening. But that actually makes this more exciting for me because game number one, that player had experience against him before, still couldn't stop it. And I'll be keeping an eye on the player to see if people are trying to beat him in more unique ways now when they inevitably see he's playing Ethiopians. So thanks to those who watch. Thanks to those who support the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you with another video soon.